as our newest, most perceptive eye on the ongoing unfolding of the cosmos, the James Webb Space Telescope is revealing many things that were previously unseeable. From planets that rain sand to distant galaxies, James Webb is filling in a mysterious gap in our knowledge about the first 400 million years after the Big Bang, as well as providing clues to the existence of life forms elsewhere in the universe. However, note that James Webb not only gathers striking infrared images but also causes a few snags in the fabric of the Big Bang theory, questioning some of the facts we thought were well established. The Big Bang was an interesting event, but not the first event in the totality of reality. A recent shocking discovery made by James Webb has got the science community a buzz, as it not only could challenge the current standard model of our universe's evolution but also break one of the fundamental laws of physics, the possibility that the Big Bang may be incorrect and that the universe might be larger and older than we think. What is this discovery, and why does it get cosmologists worked up so much? Join us as we dig deep into how James Webb just shattered our cosmology into pieces. Looking out at our universe today, we not only see a huge variety of stars and galaxies both nearby and far away, but we also see a curious relationship, the farther away a distant galaxy is, the faster it appears to move away from us. This continues as far as we've ever looked and remains true on average for all galaxies. The farther away they are, the greater their observed redshift, corresponding to recessions. In cosmic terms, the universe is expanding, with all the galaxies and clusters of galaxies getting more distant from one another over time. In the past, therefore, the universe was hotter, denser, and everything in it was closer together. Imagine what this means if the universe is and has always been expanding, not just for the future but for our cosmic past as well. If we extrapolate back as far as possible, we'd come to a time before the first galaxies formed, before the first stars ignited, before neutral atoms or atomic nuclei, or even stable matter could exist. The earliest moment at modern cosmologists can be sympathetic to, as at one point in the history of cosmology, that's how the Big Bang was originally conceived. Take something that's expanding and of a certain size and age today, and you can go back to a time where it was arbitrarily small and dense. When you get down to a single point where all the matter and energy in the universe comes together at once, that event corresponds to what we know as a singularity, a point from which space and time originally emerge. But we know that's not correct today. In fact, there's a ton of evidence that points to a non-singular origin to our universe. We never achieved those arbitrarily high temperatures, there's a cutoff instead. Our universe is best described by an inflationary period that occurred prior to the Big Bang, and the Big Bang is the aftermath of what occurred at the end of inflation. Let's walk through what that looked like. During inflation, the universe was completely empty. There were no particles, no matter, no photons, just empty space itself. That empty space had a huge amount of energy in it at every location, with the exact amount of energy slightly fluctuating over time by about one part in 30,000 on average. As the universe inflates, expanding in a rapid, relentless fashion, those fluctuations get stretched to larger scales, while new small-scale fluctuations are created atop them. This superposition of fluctuations, from small scales to intermediate scales to large scales to superhorizon scales, is one of the defining predictive features of cosmic inflation. This continues as long as inflation goes on, but inflation will come to an end randomly and not in all locations at once. In fact, if you lived in an inflating universe, you'd likely experience a nearby region where inflation came to an end while the space between you and it expanded exponentially. For a brief instant, you might even be able to detect what happens at the start of a Big Bang before that region disappeared entirely from view. In an initially relatively small region, perhaps no bigger than a human-sized hamster ball but perhaps much larger, the energy inherent to space gets converted into matter and radiation. The conversion process is relatively fast, taking approximately 10 to the power of 33 seconds or so, a brief amount of time but nonetheless one that is not instantaneous. As the energy bound up in space itself gets converted into particles, antiparticles, photons, and more, the temperature starts to rapidly rise from just a few degrees above absolute zero to perhaps about 10 to the power of 20 Kelvin or so over that same brief time interval. Because the amount of energy that gets converted is so large, everything will be moving close to the speed of light. All quanta will behave as radiation, with so much kinetic energy inherent to them, regardless of whether the particles are massless or massive. It doesn't matter under these conditions. 
This conversion process is known as reheating and signifies when inflation comes to an end and the stage known as the hot big bang begins. In terms of the expansion speed, you'll witness a tremendous change from all prior behavior when the hot big bang first commences. In an inflationary universe, space expands exponentially, with more distant regions accelerating away relentlessly. But when inflation ends, the universe reheats and the hot big bang starts, more distant regions will now recede from you more and more slowly as time goes on. From an outside perspective, the part of the universe where inflation ends sees the expansion rate there drop, while the inflating regions surrounding it see no such drop. Under inflation, the distance to any object would double after a certain amount of time, and once that same amount of time elapses, that distance doubles yet again, and again, and again. The process is relentless. But once the Big Bang begins, all of that changes as the expanding universe immediately slows down once the first moment of expansion elapses. Probability-wise, it's extremely likely that from the perspective of whatever region of inflating space you're in prior to the Big Bang, you'll experience inflation ending in nearby regions many times. These locations where inflation ends will quickly fill with matter, antimatter, and radiation, and expand more slowly than the still inflating regions do, leaving you in the inflating region as a typical region within spacetime, dominating its volume. These regions where hot big bangs occur will expand away from all the other locations where inflation still goes on exponentially, meaning they will very quickly recede from one another's view. In the standard inflationary picture, because of this expansion stretched across the universe during inflation, the gravitational waves that inflation generates move at the speed of light in all directions, but unlike the visual signatures, no interactions ever slow them down. They will wash over us, arriving continuously from all directions, passing through our bodies and our detectors. All we need to do if we want to understand how our universe got its start is find a way to observe these waves, either directly or indirectly. While many ideas and experiments abound, none have returned a successful detection so far. We know what the spectrum of these fluctuations will look like and what imprint they'll have on the light within our universe, but we have no idea what their magnitude is. Different models of inflation make different predictions, and only by measuring them can we determine which model accurately describes our universe. Once inflation comes to an end and all the energy that was inherent to space itself gets converted into particles, antiparticles, photons, etc., all the universe can do is expand and cool. Everything smashes into one another, sometimes creating new particle or antiparticle pairs, sometimes annihilating pairs back into photons or other particles, but always dropping in energy as the universe expands. The universe never reaches infinitely high temperatures or densities but still attains energies that are perhaps a trillion times greater than anything the LHC can ever produce. The tiny seed over densities and under densities will eventually grow into the cosmic web of stars and galaxies that exist today. 13.8 billion years ago, the universe, as we know it, had its beginning. The rest is our cosmic history. Amidst the boundless panorama of the cosmos, we teeter on the cusp of groundbreaking revelations that promise to revolutionize our perception of the universe. And the arrival of the James Webb Space Telescope expands the reach of our celestial exploration, probing deeper into the mysteries of space and time than ever thought possible. Embarking on this uncharted voyage through Webb's discerning eye, we're offered an intimate look at the enigmatic early universe, thereby defying. For decades, planetary formation theories kept suggesting that planets received water from ice-covered fragments of rock that formed in the frigid outer reaches of a protoplanetary disk, where light and heat from the emerging system's star lacked the intensity to melt the ice. As fragments from the gas and dust of the disk move inward toward the star, they bring water and other ices to planets. After crossing the snow line, where things warm up enough that the ice sublimates and releases huge amounts of water vapor, this was all hypothesized until now. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has now observed groundbreaking evidence of these ideas as it imaged four young protoplanetary disks. The telescope used its medium-resolution spectrometer of Webb's mid-infrared instrument, or MIRI, to gather this data because it is especially sensitive to water vapor. Webb found that in two of these disks, massive amounts of cold today's episode subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes and be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content everyone support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve as always thanks for watching and we will see you next.
time.